Hey all you epic badasses, Alicia here from Vert Vixen Studios and welcome to my series on digital sculpting for cosplay and costume creation. If 3D seems like a big scary monster to you, don't worry, I'm here to help you understand the basics and how to integrate 3D sculpting and printing into your workflow. All right, so we've talked about some basics of 3D and we've barely touched ZBrush, but in this video, let's go over some basics of the program, others like it, and system and equipment requirements. As most of you know, I am currently using ZBrush 4R7, and I should really upgrade to 4R8. Anyways, ZBrush is not the most affordable program in the world, even though I think it is totally freaking worth it. Luckily for all of us, Pixelogic has created a couple other options, including ZBrush Core and Sculptress. Now, instead of going over every feature that each program has, let's take a second to look at the differences. Now, in ZBrush 4R8, one that I should probably currently own, it is fully loaded with both general and advanced features. Well, because it's fully loaded, it's going to be a little heavier on your system. For Windows, you will need a 64-bit OS, a minimum of 4 gigabytes of RAM, even though 6 plus is recommended, and a Pentium or equivalent AMD CPU, even though an Intel i5 or higher is recommended. ZBrush Core is exactly what it sounds like. For a fraction of the price, you get ZBrush's core or general features. One of the main ones that I use, Dynamesh, is included in Core. On the downside, ZBrush Core does not have Z Modeler or Z Remesher, but if you want to use this program for strictly sculpting, this may be the better option for you. Now, like the full version though, it does have very similar system requirements. If you want to see exactly what those system requirements are, you can check the link below in the description for both requirements for both programs. If Core is still not an option for you, Pixelogic has a free program called Sculptress. Now, I have personally not tried it myself, but it has come highly recommended from plenty of other sculptors. So, it's free. If you want to just give it a shot and hop in there and you're inching to try, I highly suggest you downloading Sculptress. Now, unlike ZBrush or Core, Sculptress has a much simpler UI, so you can really just dive in there and get going. This program is not nearly as powerful as ZBrush or ZBrush Core though. It won't have a lot of the fancy features that I'm covering in future videos, but once again, it's free, it's easy to use, and has very low system requirements. Let's take a second to talk about the equipment you'll need for these programs. We covered system requirements, but how do you sculpt? I get this question all the time. Are you using a mouse to sculpt? No, I am very fortunate to own a Wacom Intuos 5 tablet. It's a digital drawing tablet. There are a lot of different drawing tablets out there from several different companies, but I highly recommend Wacom products. They have several options from higher priced to lower price, but they have options for everyone. Working with a pen and tablet makes the sculpting process much more fluid, and I promise you will not regret the investment. All right, let's stop talking about the equipment and the requirements, and let's actually get in and learn more about ZBrush. Yay, ZBrush. Welcome back to ZBrush. This is the default UI, and in future videos, we're gonna be going over how you can customize this. But for now, let's cover some of the interface basics. When you first open ZBrush, you will see this box that pops up known as the light box. This displays what's in your ZBrush root folder, including Z tools, brushes, and etc. You can easily hide this by clicking the hide button or using the comma hotkey, and you can always use the comma to bring it back. This area here is the ZBrush canvas. It can contain two 2.5 and 3D elements. These are your palettes. They are used to organize all tools, utilities, and setting. Each palette is dedicated to a single set of related features and they are listed in alphabetical order. These are your sub palettes, also known as menus. They contain different actions, options, and settings which can be applied to Z tools. These are context sensitive and may appear or disappear based on your current selections. On either side of your interface, you have left and right trays. 
These are collapsible by clicking the divider. They can hold a single or several pallets. Now you can add these pallets by clicking this button and adding them to the left or right tray. You can also move them by clicking and dragging on the button from one side to the other. Next, we have pop-up windows. These hold the functions that go with the icon you have selected. For example, when I click the tool icon, I get a pop-up of all of my tool options. At the very top of the ZBrush window, we have the title bar. Now on the very left, it's going to show the ZBrush version, the memory usage. It's also going to show on the right palette visibility, default Z scripts, as well as UI configuration presets. Here we have the top shelf, and these have the main shortcuts to brush settings and Z tool manipulations. There are also shelves on the left and right. Now on the left shelf, we have the main shortcuts to painting and sculpting elements. And on the right shelf, this holds the controls for interacting with the canvas and the 3D model. Now that we understand the UI a little better, let's talk about opening a mesh, working on it, and the different ways to save a mesh or document. Over here on the right, we have our tool palette. In ZBrush, meshes or 3D objects are called tools. In the tool palette, we can create a new mesh or load one into ZBrush. If we click the tool pop-up window, we can select any of the tool primitives or basic 3D meshes that ZBrush comes with by left clicking them. Once we have it selected, you just need to click and drag on the canvas to bring it into your workspace. If you continue to do this, you will only continue to create them. If you look at the top shelf here, we are in draw mode. Now, if we want to sculpt on this mesh, then we need to bring it into edit mode. You can do this by either clicking the edit button at the top or hitting T. You can bring it back into draw mode by hitting T again or hitting that edit button one more time. Quick note, the ZBrush primitives need to be made into a poly mesh 3D object before you can sculpt on them. Just click the Make Poly Mesh 3D button in the sub palette under the Tool palette to make it sculptable. Guess what? We can open up other tools to work with. Just click the Load Tool button and navigate to the location of your tool. If you're me, it takes you 20 minutes to choose your tool. So your active tool is going to appear right over here and you can switch between the other tools by clicking on them in the Tool palette. Important note and hotkey, while you're in draw mode, you can click Control N to remove all tools and clear your canvas. Another way to bring a model into ZBrush is by simply clicking the import button in the tool palette. You can also use GoZ, but we'll go over that in future videos. Here is a list of various 3D file formats you can import and export out of ZBrush. Once you have your tool ready to go, there are some basic ways to manipulate, navigate around, and sculpt on your mesh. To rotate around your mesh on the canvas, simply left click or touch and move your pen on the tablet. To move your mesh, hold down the Alt key and left click or touch and move your pen on the tablet. Zooming in and out is a little bit more tricky. If you're using a mouse, hold down Alt and the left click, then without unclicking, release the Alt key. With the left click still down, you can move your mouse to zoom in and out. If you're using a tablet, it's the same thing, but remember, you're touching your pen to the tablet counts as a left click. You can use some of the tools in the top shelf to move, rotate, and scale your mesh. These can also be accessed with hotkeys. W for move. E for scale, and R for rotate. To do some basic sculpting on your mesh, simply draw on your mesh using your pen or the left click with your mouse. If you're using a tablet, this will be pressure sensitive. The lighter you push, the less you will sculpt. You may have already noticed, but ZBrush has symmetry. This is on by default, but you can activate this or turn it off by going to the Transform palette and clicking Activate Symmetry. Now you can choose this in the X, Y, or Z planes, or all three, and you can turn on Radial. The hotkey to turn this on and off is X. Now I use this a lot. Now as we mentioned in the last video, you need enough vertices on your mesh so you can sculpt. If these concepts are brand new to you, I recommend you check out my first video in the series, 3D Basics, before continuing on with this one. You can either up your subdivision level on your tool by hitting Control D, or go to Geometry under your tool palette and click Divide. Now in future videos, we will talk more about when you should sculpt on a higher or lower subdivided mesh. 
You can subtractively sculpt as well by either holding down Alt as you sculpt or changing your brush from Z Add to Z Sub on the top shelf. Quick note, because I use this all the time, you can hold down spacebar on your canvas to access all of your brush controls, including size and intensity. This will help you in the future to streamline your process. Hopefully this will get you going now, but don't worry, we're gonna cover more sculpting in future videos. All right, let's say you are super happy with your work and you wanna save it out. Well, let's just hit the save button, right? But wait, there is more than one way to save. There are three different ways to save in ZBrush and they all do something different. Under the document palette, there is a save button. This will only save your document and is used for illustrations. Under the file palette, you can save your project. This will save multiple tools at once and is not recommended because of the large file size. And finally, the one you'll use the most, you can save your tool or active 3D model. This will be saved out as a Z tool or a .ztl file. Save often. You don't want to lose those hours of work, so I suggest setting up Quick Save under the Preferences palette. You can export meshes from ZBrush in different formats. Now there's several different ways to do this, so we're going to cover this in future videos. If you have a suggestion for a video that you would like to see, leave it in the comments below. I am so excited to be making this video series for you guys on digital sculpting for cosplay and costume creation. A new video will be dropping every week, so make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned. If you want to help support this channel, please consider checking out my new Patreon. Link in the description below. Also, I work live. Come hang out with me at twitch.tv slash vertvixen. Once again, link is below. And seriously, thank you all so much for watching this. I really, really appreciate it. And as always, stay badass. My brain died. <laughs>